always think about your customer list like your friends, right? Like think about like, would I want to do this to my friend and would I want to send this to my friend? That one question before you hit send and before you really like map out what you're going to do is going to be so valuable. You are listening to the Messenger Mastermind Podcast, a podcast that provides actionable tactics for quickly growing e-commerce companies to profitably scale their business. The strategies shared in this podcast are implemented daily by companies generating millions of dollars in revenue each year. Our goal is to help you build long-term profitable relationships with your customers. Summer is here, and with the world returning back to normal, we can expect customers to get back to their usual on-the-go activities, and your marketing needs to connect with them quickly. SMS marketing allows you to connect with customers directly through their phones. Trusted by brands like Brooklinen, Native, Fanjoy, and more, Postscript is the leading text message marketing platform for brands on Shopify and Shopify Plus. Learn more and get a free 30-day trial at postscript.io. Want to accelerate your SMS subscriber database even faster with more qualified shoppers? Just to know has you covered. Easily collect subscribers with a tap to text opt in for mobile visitors or seamless SMS lead captures across your site. Plus, Just you know directly integrates with leading SMS platforms like Postscript to easily share your hard earned opt ins. Just you know's best practices with impression rates ensure that your KPIs don't become overinflated vanity metrics and that your opt ins are easily shared with your SMS platform. Plus, you can get access to your data anytime. So you can get the data and insights you want when you want them. Get started with a free trial of Just Uno today and accelerate your SMS subscription growth. Head over to justuno.com slash mastermind to learn more and snag your exclusive discount for being a Messenger Mastermind listener. Welcome, welcome to another week's episode of the Mas- Messenger Mastermind podcast. I am your host as always, Jeremy Horowitz, and today I'm joined by my incredible co-hosts, Mark Aruda and Ben Vandal, and we're back for a special series Really exciting. First, we are in video. So if you are just listening to us on audio, go check us out on YouTube at Messenger Mastermind, where you can actually see our somewhat beautiful faces. Uh, But it's really exciting. Today, we're going to be kicking off a a five-part series all around SMS. So today in episode one, we're going to be covering how to get started and really how to build that strong foundation. Episode two, which will come out next week, is where we're going to be covering really how to scale your program up and how to think about it as a true marketing channel for your brand. Episode three, the three of us are going to get into some advanced tactics around just where those next level programs. And if you really want to dig into SMS, you can. And then episode four, we have a really awesome interview with Brevite, a really cool brand that is doing a lot of really awesome stuff. So you're not only going to hear our perspectives, you're going to hear theirs. And then we're going to wrap the series up with an episode from Postscript where we're going to interview one of their team members who works with almost all of their enterprise or most of their enterprise clients to see what are those trends that the biggest brands who are using SMS outside of the brands are listening to right now, how they really leverage the channel. So I think the best place to get started and kind of actually, if we go back in time far enough where we all started talking about this is like, why get into SMS and why do this in the first place? So Mark, do you want to kind of just fill the audience in on like how that original conversation went? Why do we get into SMS and kind of what's the value of the channel? Absolutely, Jeremy. Thanks for that. Um, So as you probably know at this point, if you're first time listening, um, you're in for a treat here because we have been in this space for a long time. Even before SMS, this originally started with Facebook Messenger. And we took a lot of the things, a lot of our learnings from there and moved it into SMS. Um, and the beauty of SMS versus something like Facebook Messenger is the lessons that we've learned since, specifically being that we were playing on Facebook's land before with Facebook Messenger. And moving over to SMS, this is looked at as more of an owned channel. So we're able to capture those phone numbers, those contact informations to reach out to those customers or potential customers as we please. And the value is there. Um, first and foremost, the reach rate, open rate, view rate, whatever you want to call it, is through the roof. Um, we're talking 95% or more compared to email. If you're lucky, you're looking at maybe 25% open rates. It's absolutely game changer. Um, And especially now, now with a lot of changes happening on the iOS side with particularly things like email and of course, even Facebook ads, um, we are losing some edge in marketing from those channels, which makes us lean even more into SMS. Um, 
to the point where this is now probably our number one channel. Yeah, and I think that really shows from the revenue side as well, right? Like, I know for a lot of the brands that we've been testing with, it took a couple of years to get there, but we're now seeing either parity point or SMS revenue actually outgrowing and outpacing the email revenue, which is super excited. And just some high level market stats to layer on what Mark said to just kind of roll that all up into one place. There are now over two and a half billion people who have a phone and who text. It's pretty hard to have that large of a market reach in with any other channel. The other piece is, is just how intimate and immediate the channel is. So there's some stat out there that 90% of people who receive a text message open that text message within three minutes of sending, right? And so like what other channels can you really get that quick, right? I mean, like most of the time when we project out email performance, we think that it's going to take 48 hours for someone to even open it and not only to respond. Whereas somebody, we send somebody a text within three minutes, you can expect them to open it. And especially around something that like is a major event or driving a lot of traffic to the site, it can be really, really powerful in how you can just really move people's attention and what their intent to do something is in such an immediate and quick way. Absolutely. Um, I think we first saw that crossover of SMS taking the number one spot versus email probably close to a year ago. Um, and we've been seeing a lot more of that as time has been going on. And just to speak to what you're referring to of um, that almost instant view rate of an SMS, it's not uncommon to send something out. And you know, if you're, if you're looking at a list where it's tens of thousands of people, you send that out and within minutes, you can, you can look at your phone, you can look at Shopify, you can see those live visitors on site and you have thousands of people all, all because of this one platform, this one channel, um, extremely powerful. Yeah, definitely. So Ben, now that we're like into it and we want to do SMS, how should we think about picking the right vendor for our store? Like what should we be looking for? What's important when we pick a tool to power this type of program? Sure. I think it, I think it all depends. I think what you want to do is pick the best vendor that integrates with the most tools that you use. Uh, for us, we pick PostScript and that's what we suggest for most of our clients who have Shopify stores, who use Klaviyo email. Uh, it integrates well with a lot of different tools. So that's kind of one of the benefits that we find with the platform. Um, another thing you want to do is look at the customization aspects of the messaging itself. Uh, what can you do with it? How comfortable are you with the interface? Um, a lot of things go into picking the right tool, just like with anything else, but you have to do what's best for your business. Yeah, I mean, I think I would add that um, one of the most important things, especially when, when starting out in the business and looking ahead to how you're going to scale, one of the most important things is, believe it or not, is customer support. Being able to reach out to the platforms that you're working with, the channels that you're working with, and actually be able to reach a person who's helpful and knowledgeable and quick with actually getting back to you. These are the things that like you're always going to run into a problem no matter what you're working with. And being able to actually get a reply and a, and a good reply at that is really the difference between being able to stay somewhere long term and, and knowing that you have to move on. And um, we've definitely found that with Postscript. They have a live chat on their site, which we use, I would say, very regularly. Yeah. I would say that a couple of other things that are really important when determining an SMS platform is the deliverability of it, right? Like can the vendor really fulfill and especially for the larger brands out there at the volume that you want to send. I think another really important piece is how much segmentation and automation ability do you have in the platform itself? I think for the three of us, we like super nerd out about this stuff. And that's why we were very early on Clavio and a bunch of other platforms that really give you the power to dive into this from a lot of different perspectives. So looking at that and it's kind of back to Ben's point of integrations, I think that's a big part of it of you need a lot of data stored in the SMS platform that will then give you the ability and the power to really dive into the crazy cool automations or super highly segmented and targeted campaigns that you're going to want to send that we're going to get into later in these episodes. So I think the last major piece is walking through the credit system. So how do you, how do you guys think about the credit system? If for someone who's never operated or bought on a credit system before, like 
What's the simplest way we could explain that for them? Sure. The credit system is just kind of translating how many messages you get for what cost, you know, in um, the PostScript and other platforms, credit system really works on two, two main messages. And one is SMS, which is text only under 160 characters. And MMS is uh, messages, emojis, and images all in the same message. And that can be up to, I think, 800 characters, something like that, before it gets split up into another message. So those are the two main. Uh, there are other credits for international customers. For example, if you are sending to an international audience, that costs a little bit more. Um, and that's because of the deliverability of the big carriers, right? It's not the specific platform. They're kind of all pretty uniform, but it is the way, basically the cost per message. And that's the way we think about credits. Yeah, definitely. I think the other piece of that, of just like when you're thinking about it from a budget perspective, is that you buy credits ahead of time and then you use them. And you have to kind of like, almost like a pay as you go or a debit card, like continue to put more money back on the car and your credit systems, then send more messages. Eventually it will map out. And as you get a better handle of how many subscribers you have and how many messages you're sending on a, a typical month, um, you have a really good idea of how many credits you need to the point where it's a lot more predictable. But it is something that is, it's very important to know is that it's not your tr traditional just like SaaS pricing where you pay X dollars a month and it it's never changes because you're using more and less credits with each message that you send, like the message of an SMS versus an MMS. You just need to do a little bit of forecasting into how many messages and how many credits you plan on using to then understand what it's going to cost from a budgetary perspective. Yeah, and that can be super helpful too when you're um, going through a hard budget and you only have a dedicated number of dollars you can spend to a specific channel. It's very easy to see with a progress bar how many credits you have left, how many you can send. Uh, most platforms, I know PostScript does, uh, if you don't spend your credits within the given month, they roll over to the next month. So you have them there, you don't lose them. But just like Jeremy said, it's not a fixed price per month. Uh, it goes on what you spend, but it is within that 30 day window for most platforms. Yeah. So I think we've covered pretty much if, if somebody's still listening, I'm pretty sure they're bought into using the channel and I think they have a pretty good understanding. So right, like we we have a Shopify site, we've gone to add our SMS channel. I think the first most important place is you can't send an SMS message to somebody who you don't have their phone number for and they're not on your list. So Mark, do you want to just quickly walk us through a couple of tactics of how we can actually build the list? I mean, obviously, for anybody who's listening to the podcast for a while, the two for one is definitely one of our favorite. Yeah, totally. Um, I'll just start out with like probably the most basic first and foremost is like um, collecting SMS at the end of checkout. Everybody's seen that. If you've bought anything, you've seen it. You you ask for the S, your phone number, customer's phone number at the end of checkout and gather that. That's, that's very simple and standard and absolutely should be done. Beyond that, our favorite way um, is what we call the two for one method. And this is basically... Um, your standard lead capture, you might think of it usually as collecting an email address first and foremost. So that would be something like, would you like to enter our monthly giveaway um, of this prize package? Give your email. Once they do that, once they submit that, we then give them a second offer where they say something along the lines of, would you like to get a 10% off discount code in exchange for um, your phone number? Uh, obviously you'd word that a little bit nicer, but what we've actually done recently, especially with things changing with iOS, um, making things a little bit tougher for email, we are now switching that order instead of leading with email and following with SMS, we're switching that around. So the reason why we used to always lead with email is because email was extremely reliable and SMS was still a little bit new. So you lead with the first one because that's the most important one. And then you hope for the best and maybe collect about 20% or so on the second offer. Uh, where we are now, like th this, we've been running this for about two years. This is changing. So moving to SMS is saying something that, that's telling us how well SMS is working, how reliable it is for us, and also, unfortunately, where email is kind of going. So um, this, is, this is probably the number one way that most brands and businesses are not taking advantage of collecting phone numbers. Um, obviously, the most basic way being through checkout. 
Yeah. And I think for anybody who isn't really familiar with the two for one, we have a previous episode where we like break it down step by step, but it's just leveraging the pop-up that you're already using on site. Usually most brands are giving away a discount code, but I think the crazy revelation, and this is actually something that we were talking about right before we started recording is as bullish as we've been on SMS over the past three to four years and just seeing the success of, I don't know, I think we've collectively done about eight or $9 million in SMS revenue over that time period. We still were hiding SMS behind the email, right? Like you only saw that second offer. If right, like you signed up for email, you got the first email with your discount code or whatever that first offer was. And then you would see on the second page of that pop up the SMS. Whereas now we're so confident in SMS and we're so bullish on the channel that we're now moving it to that front thing where everybody who hits a site will now see the SMS offer first and then the email second. And just knowing like the conversion rates and how many phone numbers we're capturing after we lose everybody who takes the email offer, it's going to be really exciting to see just how much faster the, the SMS list will grow because we're going to be capturing so many more phone numbers. Yeah, the value in an SMS list too is really kind of like a basic supply and demand thing where everybody you know has five, 10 email addresses and some that they use for something, some that they use for another. But a phone number is something that people like genuinely communicate on. So you know they're going to get the message. You know they're familiar with it. It's very tough to fake a phone number because these are all verified. Um, so that's one way that we look at it too. It's just, it's a valuable piece of information that, you know, is tied directly to a person in most cases, in almost all cases where email addresses can be manipulated in certain, in certain ways. And, um, they can just have a bunch of them and, and maybe use one that they don't ever open their inbox. I mean, I think the, the thing I think about a lot with this is we, you've seen memes and things like that, where people, there's two types of people. There's people with no emails in their inbox or people with 10,000 emails in their inbox. And there's never people with 10,000 text messages in their inbox. So um, that's a good way to think about it. Yeah. I think that's a great point. Also, like I personally have eight emails or nine. I think two of them I only use for promotions and like to sign up for, to test and look at stuff. Whereas yeah, like I only have one phone number and I think most people only have one phone number and that's really powerful and speaks to also how valuable a customer is going to see, right? Like the other big piece of why we've always been excited about this is we know that when someone gives us their phone number, because it's such a valuable ask, they're also, they have a higher intent to buy as well. And that's what makes the list so valuable. So Mark, do you want to get into a little bit of like a super high overview of what channel diversification means and like how to cross pollinate for, from one list to another as that third tactic that we can use to really grow an SMS list quickly? High level is uh, probably the best way to go at this because channel diversification, cross pollination, um, omnipresent channel, like these, these omni channel presence, these are super important things because you never want to necessarily be contacting or having a touch point with a customer from only one place. Uh, common reasons are if you go and send an email, um, decent chance they don't see it. It goes to their work email. It ends up in promotions. They're at work, many different things. Um, so that's where we go and we do things like we take someone from one list and try to move them to another list. An example of this would be if you have someone's email address, you should do your best to try to also capture their phone number. And from, from first look, this might seem like a little unnecessary. You already have a touch point for them. Why go and spend the efforts to get another touch point? But uh, it's very easy to see once you start to stagger those messages how important this is. Um, so what, what we usually like to do is, uh, staying with the example of email, would be something like bake something into your email welcome series or send out some sort of campaign promotion that will move that subscriber from email onto your SMS list. And this is only going to amplify your reach later on in the future. And of course, solidify your business to be that much stronger because you know if they unsubscribe from your email, you're now looking at another way to reach them through SMS. Yeah, the two most important things too in cross-pollinating is just to ask and incentivize. There's really very little harm in asking somebody for another communication point. Like, for example, Mark said, you have their email address, you reach out, hey, would you like some additional exclusive offers that we send through text message? Text this keyword or click here and uh, 
you know, submit your phone number. There's very little harm in asking that. And if you, as long as you provide value to them in the initial message, then I think it's a fair exchange. And then going forward, the onus is on you to continue to provide value for them. So that way they stay on the list. But I think that's a good mentality to have, especially when you're trying to capture emails, when you're trying to capture SMS, any other touch point, ask one, ask them, and then two, incentivize them to do it. And, and that's the two main things. Yeah. And I think a common thing that always comes up when we bring this up is people are worried about cannibalization and people are worried about like, oh, well, they're just going to leave my email list or my social following or wherever we're migrating people from. Because quick caveat here, social is actually a great way to grow your email list as well, right? Like we all know their organic reach is going way down on social. So you can through keywords and through direct links and get people to subscribe to your SMS program as well. But what we actually find is the exact opposite. It's usually the people who want to sign up for both will become more engaged in their email or in social because they're, it's another intent of not only buying, but they want to hear more from you. And it's just a great way to just get another touch point. Maybe they're not looking, checking Instagram one day. Maybe they don't want to go through their emails, but now they want to get specific messages from you in text. And that is so important of like, if somebody wants to have that additional touch point with your brand, which like thinking from our side is like, wow, this is the holy grail. Like somebody's actually interested in hearing more from us. Like always give people that chance because even if there is a little bit of cannibalization, first off, at least you're cannibalizing your own revenue versus letting somebody else do it. And then the second big piece is that you most likely will actually see a net expansion where the same customers will be engaging with you in more places, which will make them more likely to buy. And it creates a nice system where all of your channels can now play off of each other and build it together. Yeah. I mean, it's really common as a business owner or um, head of a brand or marketing to assume that the, all of these messages, all of these emails or SMS, whatever it may be, you feel like it's a lot. And it feels like that because you're seeing all of them. But what you really need to understand is that your customers are not. They're missing the majority of them. So by having these additional touch points, specifically with something like SMS that no one is going to miss, it really is going to make a difference. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So we've grown the, we've gotten started. We've grown the list. We're now really invested in SMS. Let's talk about how someone can make their first 10 K. Cause I feel like everybody who's listening, that's what they're here for. So you guys are starting and we're starting a new brand or we're starting to work with a new brand. Like what are the, once we get the list growth going and once we have the like p- subscribers coming in, what are the fastest ways that we can make our first $10,000 in sales? Really two powerful things that you can set up here to get started are automations. And we always talk about how powerful automations are because they make money while you're sleeping is kind of the metaphor, you know? So really uh, simple ways to get started are to send an automatic message after somebody signs up for your list. Again, providing them with value. We want them to stay on the list as long as possible. And we want to give them value every time we message them. And then the second one is an abandoned cart. We all know it's it's a very powerful sequence in email. And it's the same for SMS. Uh, all the magnification that Mark mentioned of open rates and um, visibility of the message, it really is just as powerful in SMS. Yeah. And I think these are two like very simple, but very obvious values to just provide immediately, right? If somebody texts you, they're going to expect a response back. And so while most customers are probably savvy enough at this point to realize that it is automated, at least having something response back of like whether they manually clicked in and submitted their phone number or whether they texted a keyword, just having some sort of reply being like, hey, we saw your message. Here's the incentive, whether it was a discount code, entering them into a giveaway, something that like right? It's the back and forth. It's the conversation piece of this. That's what's honestly to me, the most exciting piece is, and then give them just some sort of call to action to the website. The beauty of SMS is that it's stone cold simple. You can't really design much. (laughs) You put a couple of emojis, some text, and if you want to do an MMS and image in, and then a link to write, just motivate, just give them to the call to action to the next step. And then the abandoned cart simple. You can honestly, most of the time run a very simple message that you're running. So that's very similar to email whether you're going to give a discount or free shipping or some sort of offer. Um, One thing that I would recommend a little bit of a, not advanced tactic, but just something to set you apart, lead with something customer support focused, lead with a, Hey, do you need help with anything? Or 
did you have a question? Even whether you can or cannot respond to it, you'll actually see an incredible lift in revenue because people most of the time just need a soft reminder and need some help to just be like, oh yeah, I didn't want to go back. Or maybe they do have a question and they go to check out your FAQs and those types of things. And so it's a very simple way. It can be one message to motivate people. And if you want to throw a discount in there, you can as well. Um, but it really just helps drive so much more revenue for your brand. Yeah, absolutely. I would say the other the other thing, just again, just kind of thinking along the lines of email here, you have your automations or your flows. Same thing for SMS, you also have your campaigns. So this would be kind of like your one-off messages. Um, we could go into obviously a lot of specifics, but just from a high level here, this is probably going to be things for like your promos or just reaching out to say something. You can, of course, be segmenting that is a little bit more advanced, but this would be like you kind of sitting down and actually putting the work in to type out a message and send it to everyone all at once versus your automation or flows, which are just kind of more set it and forget it. Yeah, definitely. And so I think in probably a, a couple hours, maybe two or three hours, you could have everything set up from installing an app, getting it live on your store, and putting the SMS capture points into different places of the funnel, like the two for one, like check out if you're on Shopify Plus, and like just sending a message that you would from your other marketing channels. And then, yeah, if you just have those couple automations set up and then send a couple campaigns for your most important events, right? Like your major product launches, your BFCMs of the year, it's not a very expensive, it's not a very high requirement or a lot of time and resources from your team, but a very quick way to make a lot of money and have a great return. One piece, just to wrap it up, we wanted to save the unsexy part for last, just to, that we wouldn't bore you at all, but compliance is a really big piece here. So just the last thing in wrapping up of to understand for getting started that you want to know is there's a couple of laws, especially in America, called the TCPA and the CCPA, there's also GDPR in Europe that really have strict rules around how you can collect people's phone numbers and then what you can do with them. So just general rule of thumb, uh, there's tons of resources on all of the SMS providers as well as on the internet. It's, and we have some, we had some links in previous episodes that if you wanna like dive into more, super high level, it always has to be an explicit opt-in. So that means that you can't have a pre-check box or you can't automatically opt somebody, opt in someone. That also means you can't just text a random phone number that you've collected without you having explicit consent that they are op they're opting into marketing content. The other thing just to keep in mind is you need to update your privacy policy and your terms of service. Whatever SMS provider you go with should have this as well. It's just some pre-baked legal template that you can just copy and paste in. You add in your company's information and you should be good to go. And then the third piece is quiet hours. So there's specific hours. It's usually somewhere around nine or 10 at night to seven or eight a.m. These rules change here and there and from time to time. But essentially just don't text your customers in the middle of their night. Like be thoughtful or really early in their morning. Like be thoughtful of when you text your customers and the last piece of advice that I kind of just want to wrap up this is just always think about your customer list like your friends, right? Like think about like, would I want to do this to my friend and would I want to send this to my friend? That one little bit of that one question before you hit send and before you really like map out what you're going to do is going to be so valuable because it will take away so, many, so much of the bad acting of like, why would you text somebody at 3 a.m. their time? Or like, why would you send somebody some spam that they're not really going to want? So there's tons of more resources to dive into. We're going to have a bunch more episodes in the series where we're going to dive into more deeper and more complicated concepts here. So definitely tune in next week. Uh, we're going to have a lot of really exciting content. Next week, we're going to really dive into, okay, now we've made that first 10K. How do we go and scale that up to be 100K, a million, more than a million? So you can really have this as a solid marketing channel, not just something that you've tacked on to your other marketing channels. Thanks for listening to another week's episode of the Messenger Mastermind Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with another e-commerce marketer. And always let us know what you think down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. If you're looking for cutting edge tactics and the resources that we rely on to run our businesses, sign up for our newsletter. We'll include a link down below. As always, stay confident, connect with your customers, and keep crushing it.